What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm going to break down Sean T, dig deeper, the meal plan that I'm going to do. Not necessarily the one that they're suggesting, but the one that I'm going to. And hopefully this video helps you decide which meal plan that you're going to want to do to get the results that you desire. The biggest piece of house cleaning we need to go over first is I am not a registered dietitian or a nutritionist. So I don't have any of the certifications, the licensing, any of that stuff. I can only tell you what I'm going to do and maybe give you some idea of what you could possibly do. If you are super concerned over your nutrition plan, I would highly suggest you getting in contact with a nutritionist, a dietitian, and working with them so that you can dial in what you need to do. If you don't have that means, then I guess it's time for trial and error. Let me bring you up to speed in about two sentences. Beachbody, now body, has a workout program that is focused around strength, hypertrophy, and body composition. Done by a trainer, Sean T. The program's name is Dig Deeper. The company, body, with an I, not with a Y, but B-O-D, I has three nutrition plans that it likes to pair pretty much with any one of the programs that they have from a gut protocol to a Porsche control to a flexible eating plan. All three of those programs are suggested to use during Dig Deeper. They just up the protein. Let's just call it what it is. They say, hey, eat a little bit extra protein. I'm going to personally take a different approach, but there will be several similarities with what they're already offering. So if it's something that you wanna be able to do to have this pre-planned package nutrition plan, that might be the right way for you to go. Before I get to the nutrition plan and how I am deciding calories, macros, all the good things that you guys probably want to know, let's do a little bit of house cleaning and catch you guys up to see possibly if the program is right for you and what nutrition plan might be in the area that you want to explore that will give you the biggest bang for your buck. I've already said Dig Deeper is a body composition workout program, which means it is about the amount of fat and fat-free mass, which is your muscle, your bones, and the water that your body contains. Basically for most of you, it's the ratio between fat and muscle in your body. But is a body recomposition program right for you? Is it the one that you should be doing right now? And what I mean by that is a workout program combined with a nutrition plan. There's usually four people that fall in that category that have seen pretty good results with that. The first one is a new lifter. Someone who has no background in workouts whatsoever. They are prime, right? They have never seen muscle growth. They have not been in a nutrition plan instantaneously both those things together are going to make it so that they can see results very quickly. A good nutrition plan and a good workout program is going to be able to produce results for them. They're going to be able to pull from stored fat to create muscle. Number two, the overweight. You can pull plenty amount of energy from the stored fat and still operate in a deficit while creating muscle and fat burn at the same time. Something that we're going to talk about those two things at once are very difficult to achieve. Number three, previously fit people, the ones that now have obstacles, the one that may have let themselves go, the dad bod, the weekend warriors, the ones that may have had an injury. You are predisposed to muscle growth and nutrition plans. Therefore, the body responds really well to what it already knows. And finally, the consistent. The one who either works out at home quite a bit or the gym goer, you're consistent, you work out, you don't have a particular plan in either workouts or nutrition. And changing the level on both of those can be a real game changer in developing muscle or fat loss. Now that we got that out of the way, do you fit in one of those four categories? Let me know. And if you don't know what category you fit in, maybe reach out to me. Now that we got that out of the way, I will tell you what number I lie in. Number four. I'm there. I'm the guy that goes to the gym all the time. I don't have hyper focus on a plan or a workout currently. And I know that by upping that focus that I'm going to be able to create changes in my body composition. So let me give you an example. You teach foreign language, Chinese, and Spanish. You have a group of students that want to know Spanish and then you have a group of students that want to know Chinese. If you put both those students in the same room, do you believe that you could expect the results that they would both learn efficiently and effectively the foreign language that they wanted to learn? Probably not. There'd be a few overachievers if you separated them and took the students that wanted to learn Spanish and taught them all Spanish and then you separated the students that wanted to learn Chinese and taught them all Chinese. You would see much different results you'd see much higher rate of learning, efficiency, and the use of that language. It's the same thing when you're thinking about fat loss or muscle gain. 
You can't put them in the same room and expect a great, efficient, quick outcome when you could separate them and do an incredible job at achieving your goal with one and then coming back to the other and doing an incredible job at achieving the goals with that. Put them together, you have a very long, overwhelming, stressful, ineffective road. Moving into probably what will be considered the biggest eye opener of this entire video. Answering the question, do you want fat loss or do you want muscle and strength gains? That's a question that if you answer it is really going to be able to help you out as you go into Dig Deeper or any workout program for that matter. This is going to be one of the biggest controversies because some people think you can, others scientifically say you cannot. Here's why. If you're concentrating on strength and muscle, you're often in a surplus, which means you're feeding the muscle to grow. You need more calories, you need more macronutrients. You need more. Inversely, if you wanna lose fat, you need to be in a deficit, a caloric deficit. There's no better way to lose fat than to be in a caloric deficit. And I know I will probably get people like, no caloric deficits and you can't do that and restriction and, 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 and trigger warning. I didn't say that you needed to be on a highly restricted, you know, bad area that's gonna stress you out and overwhelm you. And that's why this whole entire video, I'm gonna keep saying this, you've gotta do what's best for you. And part of what's best for you is that you've gotta understand your stress levels and what you're capable of, what you're willing to do, and what results you ultimately want. I'm sure most people are gonna lie in the area of fat loss. Let me help you out and break this down why both phases need to exist. You see, results and fitness are not linear, which means there isn't this beautiful line that just continues to go up and up and up because you're doing a certain particular plan. What happens is that it looks more like steps, right? It goes like this, it goes like this, here, 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 here. And sometimes it does this to go up, down to go up, down to go up. But what does that mean? In the world of changing your body composition, they both need to exist. In the health and fitness world, you cannot be on one 100% of the time. You can't be on, I'm just gonna grow muscle, 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 muscle. It's not gonna happen. And nor can you be, I'm just gonna trim my fat, trim my fat, trim my fat, trim my fat, right? So if we looked at it this way, and if we could agree on this, that if we wanna target muscle, we're gonna grow muscle and probably increase some of the fat on our body because we're gonna eat in surplus and we're okay with that. And we are going to grow muscle, increase our metabolism and our ability to burn fat and, and access different energy sources to burn fat, which is fat, okay? We need to access the fat to burn the fat. We're going to lose fat in our body. Let's go over a few key details. The more you feed a muscle, the more it grows. So when you operate in a deficit, you're able to access fat for energy and that burns the fat off your body. So when you put more muscle on, you're probably going to put more fat on. When you reduce those calories and the food intake that you have, you are then going to be able to access stored fat as an energy source rather than food so that you can burn that for energy. When you burn that, you're able to alleviate the amount of fat in your system. So those two things are completely different. Fat tissue and muscle tissue operate on two different systems. If you are in a muscle building phase, you're more than likely putting on a little bit more fat because of the surplus of calories that you're taking in. If you are on a fat burning stage, you are more than likely taking in a deficit of calories to access stored fat as energy in order to fuel yourself for your workouts, thus lowering your fat composition in your body. Make sense? Good. Now that we have that out of the way, you can begin to think about what do you want in this particular phase? Sean's got three phases in his workouts and you could change up your nutrition based on the phase. I personally am going to build muscle in the first two phases and I'm going to trim fat in the third. So there will be some differences that I will take on as far as nutrition. For you, you're gonna wanna decide, what do I want? Do I wanna become stronger? Do I want more muscle on my body? Do I want a higher metabolism? You're gonna have to feed it. 
And that expectation is being okay with, I may gain a little weight. I may maintain, I might go up a little bit, but I am gonna get stronger. So your success is going to be judged on your strength gains, not on your weight loss or your body change because it's probably gonna get a little bit bigger. Remember, it's needed to make more muscle so that you can burn more fat eventually. If you're gonna go into this and think, I want to burn more fat, you're going to operate in a deficit and you're not going to feed the muscle. And if you're not going to feed the muscle, you're okay with not having more muscle and more strength. You're gonna be okay with actually cutting fat. I think that that is a really important point to set that expectation and set you up for success so that you can understand the steps, right? That it's not linear going up, but rather, oh, I'm in a fat loss stage. Oh, all right, I plateaued, I went through that phase. All right, I'm gonna go into a strength phase. I'm gonna gain some size. I'm gonna put a little bit more fat on. I'm gonna increase my metabolism. As you do this stair climb, you develop habits over time and you understand that fitness isn't linear. It's actually a step-by-step -step process. It's ebbs and flows, it's ups and downs. As you have this focus and you understand the decision and the expectations of the phase that you're in, a program like Sean's who's got three phases, four weeks, four weeks, four weeks, you can look at it and say to yourself, what do I want in this particular phase? What are my expectations and what will denote success for me rather than it's not working for me. I thought I would lose weight. I think I'm bulking, I don't know. I think having this understanding that you're either putting on size, maintaining or trimming fat is gonna help you with your expectations as well as your focus and your measurement for success. Here's the thing. I'm not advocating high restricted diets, diet culture, but what I do advocate are training environments. Times where you want to go next level, focus, level up, do something that's out of the norm, challenge yourself. Do I think that anybody should live in a recomp program forever? No. Do I think that you could learn bad behaviors in any diet plan or program? 100%. So that's gonna be up for you to have an understanding of where you're at. It's going to be ultimately up to you to understand, to respect, any diet program system or plan and use it for your needs. I would certainly hope that you're not going to overuse it, misuse it, but have a good understanding of what it will produce over time. There are certain people that do not do well in a surplus or in a deficit. If you're one of those people, I do not suggest doing a recomp plan. I suggest you taking the very long road and living a healthy, fulfilling life that's best for you. But if you wanna go into a training modality and have the type of nutrition plan that I'm about to explain, jump on board, have fun with it, but again, don't misuse it. First thing we're gonna do is create the foundation of maintenance calories, where we break even. Once we have that, we can figure out the surplus in order to gain muscle or the deficit in order to burn fat. I, to start out, am going to be in a maintenance surplus and I'm not too sure of a surplus of what I'm going to be in because I need to be able to test that to understand how I'm feeling, what's happening, the results, the goals. I wanna make sure that I'm doing this in a way that feels good and healthy for me and not just go, I'm adding in 600 to 1,000 calories to my maintenance base calorie. The same that I would say about a deficit it. Is it 300? Is it 600? Is it 500? Is it a thousand less than what you should be having? I do believe your height, your size, your current condition will dictate that 300, 600, 500, 1000, right? Like 300 calorie deficit to a five foot tall female could be substantial. And a thousand calorie deficit to a six foot five, 350 pound guy might not be such a big deal. So operate within a sliding scale, understand that you're going to probably have to push through and understand what you need to be able to do that's gonna operate well for you. Remember, diet and nutrition is about a journey. It's about understanding you and you can change. Your gut can change, your body can change, your needs can change. So you're constantly in motion to be able to find what's right for you. You can't just sit there and say, I found it, this is it, and I never have to change. So. Be weary, be understanding, and be a knowledge seeker, but not a doubt jumper. 
And what I mean by that is react to the way that you feel, but don't look for the doubt on why something is not working for you. And going back to what I already said, understand the expectations of the journey, of the route, the roadmap that you chose. Dig deeper, Sean T, diet plan, part two. I need to go over it. Part one was just kind of setting you up for understanding so then you can get it more into the nuts and bolts. This is a recomposition program and I wanted to make sure that you had that knowledge before getting into a plan and system with numbers and a little bit more hyper focus. The last thing I will go over before I break down what exactly I'm going to do for a nutrition plan with Dig Deeper is Let's take a look at why the recomp is going to work, right? Jeff Nipper uses this example and he has an incredible macros book. He has an incredible YouTube channel that talks about weight loss and muscle gain, lots of stuff. So go follow, shout out Jeff Nipper. I will leave a link down to his channel in the description down below. But here you guys go. Let's use this example as a car. You are a car. It's got an engine, it's got to be fueled, and it needs to have maintenance and oil changes. The car is you. The engine happens to be the workout. The fuel happens to be everything that you're gonna eat. The maintenance on the car and the oil changes are the maintenance that you need to be able to do, the recovery and supplements that you'll take in order to make the car operate even better for a longer period of time. So when we look at it that way and we say to ourselves, you being the car, and if you fuel yourself as great as you possibly can with whatever food that you choose, whether it be calories, macros, high, low, food quality, processed food, you put that in there. If it doesn't have a good engine, you go nowhere, period. The engine is the workout. And what I believe is that because Sean's workout has three different phases with multiple sets and reps and ladders and, and all kinds of different things, I do believe there is a level of progressive overload in there to propel the car. You have the system in place, right? I will do a video on supplements that I'm going to use and that will be a quick brief video that will tell you exactly why I'm doing the supplements that I'm doing and how that I'm using them. But until then, I'm gonna to explain to you that fuel that you put in your your car doesn't get used up unless the engine is there. So you have to move. So now we've got this beautiful car. We've got a great engine. We've got this supplement video that I will make. But we've got to talk about food. And we've got to talk about how much gas do you want to be able to put into your car or these days, how much wattage do you want to have so that you can drive your electric car wherever you want, right? So we're going to move into what I am going to do for a nutrition plan. The first thing that I have to do for myself is to understand what are my maintenance calories. Maintenance calories are those calories that make me stay even. I don't gain weight, I don't lose weight. I don't gain fat, I don't lose fat. It's just my operating self, right? The first thing that we kind of want to be able to understand is how we burn calories to create this maintenance number right? Like what is my break even point? The first way that we burn calories is BMR, basal metabolic rate. What does that mean? Mike? sounds like a bunch of dirty English. It's just you being alive. You just being alive. Like if you laid in a bed, how much would you burn? That is about 70%. Your body just operating as the body does. You being alive, you burn about 70% of your calories. The second is called NEAT, which is your non-exercise activities that are thermogenic, AKA brushing your teeth, cooking your food, walking the dog, anything that you do throughout your daily activity to be you. That makes up roughly around 20%. The third one is digestion. You're going to have to expend energy in order to digest the food and the fuel that you take in. That burns calories. So that's the third. I believe that is about five to 10%. And then you get into exercise, which is thermogenic activity. It's the activity that you place upon yourself to become healthier, to burn calories. It's a very dedicated focus thing. And again, that's really small too. That's like five, 10%. So it's not really a lot when you think I'm healthy because of my exercise. No, you're more healthy because you're alive, which means your food, your lifestyle, your stress, all the things that you do in order to be alive, to have your heart do well, are probably the most important things in your life. 
five to 10% out of your workouts, but I would say you need to concentrate on those as well. There's a lot of ways on YouTube and the internet, like books, everywhere to figure out what is your maintenance calories. The first one is always the most difficult and it's the one I'm going to skip over for myself. I'm not doing it. Basically, it's me figuring out what I do in a day and then figuring out how much food that I eat. I do the calorie basis for that. Once I figure that out for a week or two, I look at whether or not I was gaining weight or I was losing weight. And if I can find out what place where I was not losing weight and I was just maintaining, well, that's my maintenance. The second way, which I found to be a pretty good way, is to take your body weight and multiply it by 14. If you take my body weight at 179 and you multiply it by 14, I end up with 2,500 calories. And that's my maintenance. And I'm sure that there's a sliding scale depending on how fit I am, how active I am, what my current caloric burn is. And at 54, I think that 2,500 is just about right for me. So I'm gonna go with that number and then decide surplus, or deficit from there. The research that I've done that has shown to produce the most results for me is protein between 1.2 grams and 1.6 grams. I know that everyone's like, oh, but the standard says 0.6 or 0.7. I'm telling you what I'm doing, not what the standard is. I'm at 1.2 to 1.6. I think that 1.6 is for the more elite, outgoing, and 1.2 is for more of a weekend warrior. So we're gonna say for me, I'm at 1.4. I'm gonna go right in the middle of that and adjust accordingly as I go. Looking at those numbers for protein and knowing that one gram of protein is equal to four calories. Going with 1.4 grams per body weight, I multiply that times 179 and I come out with roughly 250 grams of protein in a day. Since I know that one gram of protein equals four calories, I'm able to take the 250 grams of protein, multiply that by four, and I'm able to get a number of 1,000 calories of protein in a single day. I take that 1,000 calories, I divide it by my maintenance calories of 2,500, which gives me 0.4. I multiply that now by 100, which gives me 40. What is that? It's 40% protein for maintenance calories. So when you look at your macronutrients, I'm at 40% protein. Now, since I know that I'm in a strength building mode, I know that I wanna have higher carbohydrates to be able to fuel muscle growth as well. I wanna have the energy and I want the protein synthesis for muscle growth. I need to figure out the ratio of my carbohydrates and my fat. And that's going to be a personal decision. Since I'm pushing more on the strength side, I'm pushing more into what will give me energy, which means I wanna be able to have 30 to 40% carbohydrates and I want that fat at 20 to 30%. My baseline, I'm going to do a 40% carbohydrate, a 40% protein and a 20% fat. It's a little bit lean in the fat and I will make adjustments if need be. So when you look at this as far as calories go in my maintenance, I'm at 1,000 calories for my protein. I'm at 1,000 calories for my carbohydrates. And then I am at 500 calories for my fat. And what does that come out to be in grams? 250 grams per protein, 250 grams for carbohydrates, and then finally 55 grams of fat. And how does that figure it out? So if I want 40% to be carbohydrates, I already know that that's a thousand calories because we did the math with the protein. I know when it comes to carbohydrates, I want 40% carbohydrates to begin with. So I take a thousand calories that I already found out from the protein and I know that each carbohydrate is four calories. Divide that 1000 calories by four carbohydrates, which ends up with 250 grams of carbohydrates. I figured out my fat by saying 40%, 40%, that's 80%. I'm left with 20%. And in order to find 20%, it's 500 calories left. And I know that each calorie of fat is nine calories per gram. I know I'm like spinning your heads and I will leave this all down below. But when you do this, you're able to then see that it's 55 grams of fat for maintenance. That is my maintenance number at 40, 40, 20.
But what does that mean? You're like, okay, you figured out your maintenance. The great part about figuring out your maintenance is then being able to figure out whether or not you want to be in a surplus or a deficit and how much of that surplus and deficit you want to be in. If you're a person that wants to be in a 600 calorie surplus to gain muscle, all you have to do is figure out the math on 600 calories and what those percentages are. 600 extra calories for me, when you look at protein, 40% of 600 is 240. That would give me 240 calories for protein. I divide that by four because we know that that's how many calories are in one gram of protein. When I divide the 240 by four, I'm left with an extra 60 grams of protein that I need to add in surplus. I do the same for fat and I do the same for carbohydrates, and now I know how many grams or how many calories that I need to be able to add with each macronutrient. I'm going to get this question. Refeed, Mike, will you refeed? Because you're working out, you're training hard, does your body need even more calories? I think that I'll be fine while I'm operating in a surplus. If not, and I do feel that I need more, on the seventh day, which is like six days of training, which we five days of lifting, one day of low impact steady state cardio. That sixth day, I will refeed. And what does refeed mean? I will bump my calories, an additional 300, 600, whatever I wanna be able to do to be able to feel full. My body be able to access that glycogen to help me repair the muscle and restore energy levels to be ready to go on a Monday morning. If you're in maintenance or you're in deficit, I would strongly suggest refeed on day seven. Go for, you know, maybe an extra 500, but remember the sliding scale. 500 to you would be way different to a 6'5", 300 pound dude. That's not really gonna be a refeed for that person. Refeed accordingly and don't do it with trash. Don't be a trash monger on refeed data. That doesn't mean head right straight down to McDonald's and, and just pound food all day and be like, this is my cheat day. I said it's a refeed day, not a cheat day. So that would be my recommendation. As far as me, I won't be refeeding unless I need it, but if I do, I will. And then obviously in the final phase, I will be doing a refeed. So I know it's a lot and I know it's tough, but when you're able to do a little work up front, you can get a lot on the back end. And that's what this is about. You're in a training cycle, you're in a phase, you've chosen to level up, not just go through the motions. Nothing wrong with going through the motions, nothing wrong with maintaining, nothing wrong with doing 2B mindset to doing portion fix, you know, keto, paleo. I'm not against any diet. Let me just say that now, and I know diet, I just triggered you. I'm not against any nutrition plan, but what I'm doing to recomp is exactly that. I figured out my maintenance. I am then going into a 600 you know, calorie surplus in the beginning. And then in the last phase, I'm gonna go into a caloric deficit to be able to cut those calories out and to cut down some of the fat that I've been able to gain and keep the muscle that I have. Knowing that I'm in a training cycle, right? Like I've got three months, 12 weeks, I'm probably gonna gain some back. I'm probably gonna gain some weight back. I'm probably gonna lose some muscle. I'm not gonna maintain this hyper-focused, hyper-training environment. Therefore, I understand that my job was to get after it for 12 weeks and get these results, knowing that I'll probably, let's just say I lose 20% of my results, which is fair, right? Like It's not a big deal to gain 80%. If I told you all you had to do is give me 20 and I would give you 80 and that had to do with money, that had to do with quality of life, you'd be like, sign me up, I'll give you 20 all day. That's really what's happening is that you're doing 12 weeks of work for 80%. You're not doing it for 100 because you gotta give some back, you gotta pay some tax. And ultimately, you're probably not gonna live in that space. Like if I ended up with getting ripped abs, I know I'm not gonna walk around with ripped abs. I know I'm not gonna be completely happy. I know I'm not gonna want to you know, live that lifestyle forever. But did I wanna lower my body fat? Yes. Did I wanna increase my muscle mass? Completely I wanted to do that. So that's kind of the expectation that I hope you also take away with, I'm in a training cycle and this is what I'm doing. So I'll operate in this 600 surplus and then I will decide 
what my ratios will be and what I will do come the deficit because I like fat. I do believe fat is great. I think that fat burns fat. I think that fat energizes you. I think that fat is healthy. I'm not afraid. Of it. I think 20% is kind of low and I may end up tweaking it along the way. So if you have questions about that on your journey and along your way and where I'm at, follow me on my social media, reach out to me, ask me if I tweaked it, ask me if this video changed, just ask away because this video is, is, is evergreen and ever loading. This is my starting point and this is what I wanted to tell you guys about. Probably, and I might, lower my carbohydrates but up my fat. I don't know that I will my protein, but I might. And, and I think that that's a good, healthy place to be, but I will not be a jumper. I think program jumpers look for doubt. Doubt jumpers is what I originally called them, right? I'm looking for success. I'm looking for all the reasons to stick and stay, not, oh, I'm a doubt jumper. So don't be a doubt jumper. Oh. I want to address the quality of food. And I know you guys are like, what's good, what's bad, what's healthy, what's not. I know I'm going to get asked this question, but what am I supposed to eat? What foods, what proteins, what vegetables, what carbohydrates? Is fruit right? What fats? Here's my standard, you guys. I'm not training for a bodybuilding competition. I'm training for a healthy heart and to look better. I just want to lower the fat and increase the muscle mass. I'm not splitting hairs, so I'm not going crazy over this. But what I am doing is I'm thinking of the word quality. Am I eating quality proteins? Yes, I will be eating a lot of fish. I will be eating poultry. I'll be eating wild game. I will be eating lean meats, without a doubt. Steaks, lean. I'll be eating fillets. I will not be eating heavy fat steaks. I will be eating carbohydrates. I will be adding fish oil. I will be adding the omegas from the fish and the salmon that I eat. I'm not afraid of fat. Keep that in mind. I will not be adding vegetable oils, the processed foods, the sugars. Those are out. They're gone. Okay. So don't message me and go, is it okay if I have ho-hos or cookies? Sure. It is if that's, that's where you're at and, and you want to be able to eat those so that you do well. Just note that when you eat those, it makes your process a little bit longer, but it may make you happier. Don't get too upset and don't think that you have to split hairs in order to get results you're gonna end up just fine. As far as carbohydrates, low glycemics, right? Sweet potatoes, red potatoes. I will eat some potatoes. I will eat some rice. I'm not going down the rabbit hole, but I am staying away from high sugar foods. I will not be eating the cookies. I will not be eating the sweets. It's just not something that, I, the breads, the white breads, you know, the normal stuff. I won't be eating any of the starchy foods. I'm not afraid of them. I'm just gonna do this for the 12 weeks and I'm, then I will go back more balanced eating, less hyper-focused environment. A ton of vegetables. I think that when we hear carbohydrates, we miss out on we need vegetables. We need big leafy greens. We need minerals. We need vitamins. And here's the other thing. I will be sourcing from many different areas. In the past, what I've done is I've often said, I'm just going to eat this way, the same way over and over and over every day. I want to be able to get vitamins and minerals from multiple sources so that my body's not like, I always get it from spinach. That's not what I want to do. I'm not looking for those hyper, hyper, hyper results. I'm looking for good results. So if you're looking for a list of proteins, carbs, and fat, Google. Literally, there are plenty out there that will tell you what are highly recommended and what are ones that you should stay away from. It's that simple. You don't need a video from me telling you exactly what I'm gonna do. I will share my journey, I will share my food, I will share my workouts on all of my social media, I will be checking in here on YouTube, so you'll be able to get that along my journey. But for me to lay out my exact plan, I will tell you this, I know it's gonna change and I know it's a plan for me. It's not a plan for you, but it's certainly a plan that you can look at and learn from and enjoy. The other thing I want you to know, hitting goals is uncomfortable. You've got to do uncomfortable things. You've got to be uncomfortable. You can't continue to do the same things that you were comfortable with doing before you started a program like Dig Deeper or a nutrition plan that's going to change the ratio between muscle and fat in your body. You're going to have to struggle a little bit. Get okay with that. Get okay with not being competition ready. Be okay with understanding that you're going to be in a fat loss or a strength phase and get okay with consistency. The more consistent you are, the more apt you are to have the results that you ultimately want. But continue to think, fitness is not linear. You're going to have to pick a phase and go into it get after it and then you're going to decide and then you're going to pick the next phase, go after it and get into it. You cannot stay in the same phase 
over and over and over. Wash, rinse, repeat, and believe that it's going to get you healthier. Another key takeaway for you guys is that it, while you go through these 12 weeks or any fitness program, workout program, you're gonna end up with stubborn areas. I wanna be able to lose fat in that last place, that troubled area. And if you're one of those people that your troubled area is a place that you have never had to deal with fat loss before, it's gonna be the most difficult. It's gonna require the most attention. And I don't mean the area is going to require the most attention. I mean you're gonna have to pay attention to your details and you're going to have to work a little bit harder and you're going to have to go through ebbs and flows in order to make that happen. I've actually argued with a well-known trainer that we both have different beliefs on this. The trainer has specified that you can do it by the same diet over and over and over and over and on the same phase doing the same thing. I personally believe that it has to do with deficit surplus, deficit surplus, gaining weight or gaining muscle losing fat, gaining muscle, losing fat. So it is a secular thing to get you down to where you ultimately wanna be and lose that troubled area. I do believe that that's what needs to happen, that it is secular and it, it has to do with phases and that it's not just, I gotta continue to have a caloric deficit and shrink that deficit and shrink that deficit and go through this like, oh my gosh, I'm too lean, I'm too lean. That's not how, it ultimately works. It's gonna come down to you going through these phases of more muscle, burn fat, more muscle, burn fat. And on occasion, yeah, it is going to be a point where you're like, gosh, man, I am really getting down and I really need to be able to burn this and I need to get into a deficit. And you'll go and you'll become uncomfortable for a little bit. I am not promoting unhealthy diet culture. I am not promoting high restriction. I'm helping you understand that fitness is about phases. And you just have to pick the phase that you're going to be in and understand the expectations of that phase so that you can focus on the results that you need to be able to achieve. And then once you've gotten through that phase, you get on to the next phase with new expectations and new goals. Ultimately, I made this video so you can have some insight on how I am personally going to attack this. I will not be doing this in a flexible plan. I will not be doing this in portion fix. I will not be doing this in a way that is a fly by night or a maintenance level, right? I am going to do this to target muscle gain in the beginning and then I will target fat loss towards the end and both that will require me to be able to flex my caloric intake either in a surplus or a deficit over the 12 weeks while I'm going through it and full disclosure I'm not going to stress myself out I'm not going to become overwhelmed I'm not going down a rabbit hole where I can't maintain any part of these results that I'm achieving. Because I just don't think that that's a good message to send in fitness in general, unless you're setting the expectation of saying, you are in a hyper, hyper, hyper program to do something that's not gonna last. And we all know that's cool, but is it something that you really ultimately want in your life? Is that gonna be psychologically okay for you to be in a training modality that will produce the results and goals that you want to be able to have eventually? And then will you be happy there? That's always a question and I see it a lot with some of the clients. That's why I coach and mentor in a way to help people understand the expectation and what happens when you achieve your goal. Are you going to be happy? Are you gonna be good? What will you do next? Is it gonna to be too much, too stressful, too overwhelming? or? Is it gonna fit right into what you need to be able to do? So that's it, that's all I got. If you have any questions about food, check back, let me know. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, how I could do this better for you. But um, that's it, you guys. I just wanna keep you guys informed and I wanna keep you healthy.